who is Rightster? Rightster is a business that was started 18 months ago. Um, we uh, looked at the uh, video industry having actually had a content business that was producing online TV shows. In fact, we made a, a show called Trini and Susanna, What They Did Next, which was a great spoof documentary by Trini and Susanna um, themselves. And it was one of the first shows to go from online to TV. And it was aired on Channel 4, but it also ran on multiple websites before that. Um, but it was that was back in uh, 2010. It's incredibly hard to to make money in the online world. So um, that you know that experience showed us that you know it's complex because online is such a fragmented space. It's hard to get your content in front of the right audience. Hard to build a loyal following around your content. Uh, selling advertising is a challenge in its own right. Definitely, people experimenting with product placement and so on. So. We saw the opportunity to build a, a, a business, a services business that would provide a turnkey solution for content producers and publishers who wanted to focus their time on actually making great content and have a partner who was going to help them with all aspects of distribution, marketing and monetization. Rightster actually works with a, a broad range of customers. We see this business um, uh, in, in a number of different verticals. Um, uh, we've chosen to focus on fashion, so we live stream and do the VOD distribution for um, already London Fashion Week and New York Fashion Week, and we're extending that to other fashion weeks around the world. Uh, in news, we uh, distribute content for ITN, for The Guardian, um, and sports news television and a number of other news networks around the world. Uh, in short form entertainment, we have an interesting business because we formed a partnership with a, a fantastic company called Viral Spiral, who represent the uh, commercial interests of people who have created a hit viral video. Um, and as it's taking off, you know, you can go to Viral Spiral and they'll help you think of ways to license it into TV or spin off a book or whatever it may be. Um, and we did a deal with them to represent and manage and improve the monetization of those videos in the online domain. Um, and that's proven really, really exciting. So that includes videos like Charlie Bit My Finger again um, and others. Uh, we then got into sports and we did a deal with uh, an agency called MP and Silver, who are very entrepreneurial um, uh, agency that have um, signed international broadcast deals for people like Serie A, the Italian Premier League and others. And so we work with them as their digital partner to help them distribute both live and VOD around the world. In fact, we now live stream over 2,000 sporting events a year, which is obviously a, uh, now a very big part of what we do. And then the final vertical is music. And I mean, so Charlie Bit My Finger is, is one of the top 10 videos of all time. All the ones above it uh, are music clips. And so, you know, we've um, found a lot of people in the music industry looking for help, again, trying to deal with the complexity of this market. The reality of the situation is that digital video is becoming incredibly complex. It's complex because there's fragmentation of audiences, um, both on large platforms like YouTube and also in, in other environments. Um, there are lots of different devices uh, that you might want to deliver the content to. There are a lot of different business models that you might want to support. And by their very nature, premium video, whether it's live or video on demand content, uh, tend to have quite complex rights restrictions based on country and you know windows, time windows. So it's become a very, very complex space. And you can you know, spend a lot of time and money putting together an internal capability or system um, and people and processes to, to, to be successful in video, whether you're trying to just increase an audience size and reach, or whether you're trying to actually make money. And Rightster came in to be a specialist solutions provider in this space, and number one job, how can we simplify it for clients, enable them to get to their targets uh, with minimal investment, uh, minimal time, um, and basically it's all about speed to revenue and ultimately speed to profit. Um, and if we can do all of that, and give people complete control over their rights and transparency over the results. I think you know we've got a, uh, a, a fantastic proposition, and, and that's been supported by our customers so far. Clearly, 4G LTE is going to uh, change the number of places we can consume video, and how many places we can be synchronizing things in the background. I mean, I don't know about you, but I will often download things um, at home or in the office, and then you know on the way to work. Um, uh, uh, watch or listen to those things. So uh, I think it's going to change because we're going to be able to do those things on the move. For us in live streaming, actually, it's really exciting development because you can have camera crews out with live uh, streaming backpacks 
and without the very expensive technology for, that the broadcast industry has you know, perfected over the years, um, you'll be able to at a much lower cost bond together these different data circuits and live stream from all kinds of places. And I think that's going to result in a lot of innovation in the whole world of live um, coverage. So that's really exciting for us. I'm not sure about um, the capacity of those networks, if we're all on them at the same time, they'll probably go down to 3G, 2G or 1G in terms of performance. YouTube's an incredibly important part of most people's strategy. Uh, they've done an incredible job of both building an audience and now creating very powerful tools for um, bringing that audience together around content, engaging with them, um, and you know, ultimately creating a loyal following, um, and then monetizing that. Uh, we work um, extensively with YouTube. We manage over 250 professional channels and uh, um, have uh, an audience far in excess of 100 million monthly views. And the challenges are obvious, I think, on YouTube. There's so much information there. Uh, there are so many choices and places to go, and a lot of traffic is still driven by search. So, you know, the obvious things apply. You need to uh, correctly metadata um, uh, and add titling and so on to your content. Uh, you need to make sure the content's you know, formatted and edited in the right way um, for a YouTube audience. And that de that, there's no one answer to that. It depends on the type of content. There's then a lot of tools on a YouTube page or channel that enable you to put content together or curate it into playlists um, and lay out the channel so that people can navigate around your content very intuitively. Um, and, and you can create sub-channels or parent channels. And so um, through all of that, there, there are a lot of questions and there, there are actually many good answers, right? There's no one way to do things. So we spend a lot of time helping people think about what are they trying to achieve on YouTube um, with the content they've got. Do they need to produce any original content in addition to the current content? And then how do they package that and present that? The first thing is, you know, a huge number of the video views for anybody's content, whether it's on YouTube or off YouTube, is driven by Google searches. And um, optimizing your metadata, obviously, um, to, to get um, to the right position in the search ranks is important. Also, the popularity of that content makes a difference as to where it's going to show up. Um, but the basics is obviously you know, trying to find that content. YouTube's actually spent a lot of time helping people build channels so that instead of just searching for content, you can go and find channels uh, which are um, consistent in delivering a certain um, you know, editorial voice and type of content. You know what you're going to get. And you can subscribe to those channels now instead of just going to um, the web and searching for content that you might like. And I think you're going to see you know, that becoming more and more popular. And subscriber numbers are now getting pretty high. The actual concept of searching within a video based on metadata tagged through the timeline and, um, and maybe even uh, uh, some kind of using subtitles or something as a way of indexing different parts in the video, I think that's still very, very limited um, as a way of, uh, of looking for the right content. Um, maybe it'll improve over time. Yeah, and I think second screens are hugely exciting space because uh, the idea of having a, a, a tablet or a phone uh, with you while you're watching TV is, is obviously um, uh, already here and there's no re-engineering that needs to be done. You don't need to wire your television set into, a, into a, an internet connection to do this. Um, uh, and you don't even actually need any contractual agreement between the two parties. So um, my brother's business, Fanatics, is a great example um, where they're able to create a social sports application that sits um, on your mobile or your tablet and enables you to follow, for example, a football game and all the tweets and Facebook messages and so on from people um, who are also watching that and it automatically finds your friends who are interested in, in, in the same sport and so you can check in with each other. Um, you know, those kind of companion or, or second screen app, apps are really, really valuable um, and they're also an incredible way of doing very targeted advertising um, around, effectively around TV. Um, so I, you know, I think we all expect those to grow very, very fast, much faster than the move to you know, IP or um, internet-enabled televisions. I think it's, you know, it's a big topic. Um, there, there's obviously very um, important privacy um, rules and uh, people have to be very careful about how they manage the data that is collected. Uh, tracking cookies in, a, in an appropriate way in order to offer more targeted advertising and then 
um, uh, dispensing with that data after the appropriate period of time and so on, it gives the advertising industry a very powerful tool and really is, I think, very important to making sure there's a revenue stream to pay for all this content that we want to watch online for free. Um, so it, it plays a really, really important role. And you know, with Rightster, you're able to take advantage of that kind of behavioral uh, targeting as well as content-based targeting and targeting based on publisher site and geography and so on. So it's a very rich um, set of parameters you can use to find the audience that you want to reach um, on the platform. Uh, if cookie tracking was stopped um, for some reason, you can still target on things like content, publisher, geography, um, which can be proxies for demographics. So that you know there is a future beyond cookies if they had to stop. But personally, I think they're a very important part of the mix today.